One year when my daughter Elise was young enough to be enthralled by Barbies, I sewed a Barbie wedding dress as a Christmas present. I brought Barbie in with me today. Now you can see that it didn't have as much sparkle as a commercially made gown. But this was sewn with love, and my daughter's eyes lit up when she opened the box. And she claims it was one of her favorite gifts. Now pretty soon, your family and friends are going to be asking, what did you get for Christmas? What was your favorite gift? Now some of you, most of you, are going to have to wait until tomorrow. Did anybody already open a box? <laughs> a few, yeah. Yeah, our house too. <laughs> You're going to have to wait tomorrow to see the rest of the smiles, the sparkly eyes, and to hear the yippies or thank you sweeties, or get that big hug that speaks more gratitude than words. Did you know there was a time when people didn't celebrate Christmas with presents? Celebrations of Jesus' birthday with gifts didn't begin until 350 of the Common Era, when Pope Julius I designated December the 25th as the time to celebrate Jesus' birth. Before that time, there was a very generous bishop who lived in a country that we now know as Greece. His proper name was Nicholas of Myra. Some people called him Nicholas the Wonder Worker because of all the miracles that happened when he prayed. But we know him today as Saint Nicholas, the patron saint of children. He was famous for leaving coins <coughs> in the shoes of very poor children. And he always tried to give his gifts in secret. And if he was caught, he would say that the Lord should be thanked rather than him. He took great care of all the needy children every day. Because he wanted to share God's love just like Jesus did. And others began to copy St. Nicholas. And they began to leave baskets of food and clothing for the children and families in need. And eventually, a feast day became his name day on December the 6th. By the 10th century, the practice of giving children small gifts on December the 6th had morphed into giving gifts on Christmas. So we give gifts, like St. Nicholas gave gifts, but this giving is born out of an example of God's love. So really we give gifts because God gave us the greatest gift of all. You know, for thousands of years, people wanted to be closer to God. The prophet Isaiah begs God to open the heavens and come down and make the mountains quake at God's presence. The psalmist prayed that the light of God's face might shine on him so that he would be restored. My granddaughter asked me the other day, where is God? Well, sometimes the ancients asked that same question. Sometimes God seemed really far away in heaven and men, women, and children wanted to know God better, to feel closer to God. They wanted to see the light of God. And so God came down in the form of a baby. Born to a young couple named Mary and Joseph. And they wrapped that newborn in swaddling cloth and laid him in a manger, a feeding trough for the animals. Author Amy Julie Becker says that Jesus may have preferred to stay away from the world of stables and carpentry and crucifixion. But his coming shows us that God's love isn't abstract. It's as concrete 
as a manger, as a young man in a temple, and as a rabbi on a cross. If God had not bothered to show how much we are loved by entering into our lives, then we would have been stuck with some sort of universe builder, living far away from our chaotic, worrisome mess. Now it's fine to celebrate that kind of God at a football game, but it does us no earthly good. Reverend Epperly says that Jesus was with us not as a supernatural rescue operation, but as a loving presence. God chose to be particularly present in Jesus of Nazareth as a baby, as a healer, as a teacher, and as a friend to sinners to show that God's intimacy and care for all of creation always and everywhere. The first people to receive this gift after Mary and Joseph were the shepherds. An angel came to them, just like an angel came to Mary and then to Joseph to announce Jesus' birth. With great joy, the angel said, to you is born this day a Savior who is the Messiah and Lord. Now the shepherds were the underdogs of the first century. They worked hard, but they didn't make very much money. And they lived with the sheep, so they kind of smelt like the sheep. They didn't own the land often on which they grazed their sheep. And so often they were seen as a nuisance to be shooed away. Yet they were chosen to hear the good news first. Thank God for the heart for the underdog. Ibram, a modern day shepherd in Bethlehem, says they were chosen because they were humble. Their hearts were open to receive the gift. They're not puffed up with their own importance or shut down by their own sense of powerfulness. So they hurried to see the newborn. They were amazed. They felt the feeling of glory, and they praised God. They became God's messengers. They became part of the rhythm of Christian life. Others tell us about Jesus. We see it with our own eyes. We experience it. We believe, and then we go on to tell others what we have seen. We want to share that light and love and hope and grace just like the shepherds did on that first night. Well, that's the way it's supposed to be anyway. Sometimes there's a slight shift or a skewing, and Christmas becomes focused on the gifts for people who really don't need anything. Kids pouring over the toy catalogs and making long, long lists. Women looking at the pretty pictures of sparkly, glittery gems and imagining how good they're going to look when they have them. Or men flipping through the Best Buy or H.H. Gregg ads thinking how great that game is going to look on the big screen TV. How they're going to feel like they're right at the game when the Bose subwoofers explode with the thump and growl of the impact of the opposing players. <laughs> but it's not our birthday. It's Jesus' birthday. A time when the humble run to Jesus and ask, what can I bring? The congregation of Delmont has been asking this for several months. We think that the best gift is to help children of our greater community. So we are sending all of tonight's offerings from this worship service to the Board of Child Care. That's a United Methodist outreach ministry. And now past contributions have helped the Board of Child Care grow into a dynamic welfare agency that now offers residential care, 
foster care, adoption services, mental health services, special education, early education, more than 1,300 children and their families have been helped each year. Some of that work goes right on here in Anne Arundel County. The Safe Haven Group Home is a home for teenage boys who are transitioning back into the community. And the Mental Health Clinic is located on Ritchie Highway in Pasadena. But here's one story I'd like to share. Kendra was depressed and angry at the world when she arrived at the Board of Child Care. Her life, her very young life, had been a swirl of court hearings and temporary homes, and she thought that people were evil. They were all out to get her. She wound up at a safe haven shelter, and by the second day, she realized that she was going to have to learn how to deal with people and pick her battles. Oh, there were many, many battles as staff pushed her to focus on her education and turn her energy into community service. And at the same time, she began to be involved in the Board of Care of Child Care's Spiritual Life Program and established a connection to God that she had never had before in her life. She's now a student at Stevenson University and plans a career in the child welfare system. Even though she lives at university, she still considers the Board of Child Care home because there are people that care there. On each pew, there is a different success story. Latoya graduated from high school because her teachers at Board of Child Care Strawbridge School gave her the extra support she needed to believe that she could do it. And a ways to work loan made it possible for Rogerette Green to buy a car, go to school, get a better job, and do more for her kids. Sarah's poem describes how mental health treatment helped her work through her pain and become strong again. The Board of Child Care facilitated Zuri's adoption and now Zuri receives excellent daycare in the early childhood education program so that her new mom, Pamela, can continue to work and support the family. There are so many stories of how the Board of Child Care has been a bridge to healing and hope. Like the song we sang earlier when we lit the Advent candles, we want to be a Christ light to the broken, lost, and lonely children. We want to help the street child who has no place left to go. We want to be a friend to the hurt child, the used child that no one wants to know. Like we sang, our hope is that this year, this year Christmas comes to everyone, everyone alive. Like Jesus, we are not satisfied with the way the world is. Jesus has shown us how people working together can make the world a more merciful place. So tonight, we are going to work together to support the Board of Child Care so children can find that bridge to safety and to love. Love came down at Christmas. Born as a baby in Bethlehem. Destined to become the man who would show us how to love as God loves. The divine man that gave his life on a cross so that our sins would be forgiven and we could forever have a closer relationship with God. Tonight, we celebrate his birth by giving the gift of hope and healing to children and their families. Merry Christmas, everyone. Amen.